Al-Bayan Radio presents the following program presented by Nidal Ayyubi. Ya sa'ili amma al-dhahabi wa'aqidati Ruzik al-huda man lil hidayati yas'alu Isma' kalam muhaqqiqin fi qawlihi La yanthani anhu wa la yatabaddalu بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم دي brothers and sisters and welcome to episode number two lesson number two of our series on the Lamia for Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله In the first lesson we took an overview of the poem and also we spoke briefly about the life of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and we finished off by mentioning briefly the importance of studying Aqidah or Tawheed. Today, insha'Allah, we'd like to take the first few lines of this short and beneficial poem. The Sheikh started off, rahimahullah, with the following. يا سائلي عما الذهب وعقيدتي رزق الهدى من للهداية يسأل O oh one who asks about my doctrine and creed bestowed with guidance is he who asks for guidance. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is a supplication, a dua from Shaykh al-Islam for the questioner that Allah bestows upon him guidance. Verily the individual who asks this type of question must be one of two men. Number one, he is one who is testing the individual, desiring to know the creed of the person being questioned and fast deal with him accordingly. Or number two, he is a beginner who respects and honors the one being questioned due to what he perceives in him from the manifestations of guidance. And this is the norm for this type of question. Now my dear brothers and sisters, if we break up this part of the poem, Ya sa'ili. Ya here in Arabic, it's harf nida, which is used to basically call out to someone. Ya sa'ili. Sa'ili is a questioner, someone who is asking someone else a question. And as we know in Islam, it is prescribed to ask questions, to seek knowledge. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. And also the one being questioned, when he is able to answer, he must answer the questioner. Because as we know, withholding knowledge is forbidden in Islam when one is able to answer the questioner, especially if he is the only one who is able to answer the questioner. Because the Prophet wasallam says, as is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, that the Prophet wasallam said, مَنْ سُئِلَ عَنْ عِلْمٍ عَلِمَهُ ثم كتمه ألجم يوم القيامة بلجام من نار. Whoever is asked about knowledge and he conceals it, Allah will clothe him with a bridle of fire on the day of resurrection. And this hadith is found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and has been graded as Sahih by Sheikh al-Albani رحمه الله تعالى. The next part, يا سائلي عن مذهبي. Here Madhab is referring to what the Shaykh believes in and the path that he is upon. As we know Madhab, generally speaking when mentioned, is referring to the school of thought or the school of fiqh that the person may adopt, whether he be Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi or Hanbali. Following these four great Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi and Imam Ahmad. May Allah have mercy upon them all. But here it's referring to the doctrine, the beliefs of the Shaykh. The next part of the poem, يَا سَائِلِي عَنْ مَذْهَبِي وَعَقِيدَتِي Aqeedah, as we know in the Arabic language, it's derived from that which is tied, like when a rope is tied, for example. And in the Sharia, it means الْإِمَانُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْإِمَانِ بِالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ And this is basically the arkan of Iman. As is mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was asked by Jibreel, who came in the form of a man, what is Islam and what is Iman? And the Prophet sallallahu answered for what is Iman, what we just mentioned regarding the definition of Aqidah. And also as Muslims, we must believe in all that which follows it from the beliefs that are mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, without having any doubt. And as we know, my dear brothers and sisters, our Aqidah, our beliefs, can only be established with proofs, with evidences 
from the Quran and Sunnah. There is no room for personal opinion in this matter. It is to be derived purely from the Quran and Sunnah. And this is what the Salaf al Salih were upon. They would derive their aqidah from the Quran and Sunnah only. Now, the question I may ask why do people stray from the correct aqidah? And briefly, we can mention some of the reasons without delving into too much detail into them, as the ulama have mentioned. Firstly, al ghuluf is salihin wal awliya. To go to extremes with the righteous and the awliya and to raise them above their status and their positions. Secondly, blind following of those who have strayed without weighing up if what these people are upon is correct or incorrect. Thirdly, ignorance of the importance of the true aqidah and also from protecting oneself from that which invalidates the true aqidah. Fourthly, stubbornly sticking to the mistakes of one's forefathers. And lastly, the parents misguiding their children from the correct way as we know, every child is born upon the natural way, the fitrah, until his parents misguide him to the ways of either the Jews, the Christians, or the Majus, fire worshippers, as the hadith mentions, which is found in Bukhari and Muslim. And obviously there are other reasons as well. May Allah protect us and our offsprings and allow us to live upon the true aqidah and die upon it. The next part of the poem, Ruzik al-Huda man hidayati yas'alu bestowed with guidance is he you ask for guidance so the sheikh here he's like he's making a dua for the questioner may you who is seeking guidance be given guidance now guidance or hidayah is of two types hidayatul tawfiq and hidayatul bayan wal irshad hidayatul tawfiq my dear brothers and sisters is basically our belief that guidance is in the hand of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if allah willed subhanahu wa ta'ala he could guide all of mankind for there is nothing that he cannot do on this earth or in the heavens. Nothing happens in his dominion except that which he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in his wisdom, Allah has created us with the ability to choose and he has sent down to us guidance, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever obeys Allah and his messenger will enter paradise and whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger will enter hell. Now regarding Hidayatul Tawfiq, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has no part in this guidance because this is only from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But the second type of guidance, Hidayatul Bayan Wal Irshad, the Hidayah of clarifying the way and calling people to goodness, then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and all the Muslims have a role in this. Meaning it is a must to explain and convey the message and to show people the path of Islam. Obviously, we cannot force anyone to become Muslim, but we show the way, we give da'wah, we enjoin the good and forbid the evil. But as we said, true guidance, hidayatul tawfiq, is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no human being has any share of it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his messenger in the Quran, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءْ Verily, ye, O Muhammad, Guide not whom you like, but Allah guides whom he wills, and he knows best those who are guided. The duty of the messengers and those who follow their ways is to convey the message plainly. Allah says, وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And the duty of the messenger is only to convey the message plainly. The next line of the poem Listen to the speech of one who has ascertained the truth of his statement without departing from the truth nor replacing it with something else. He, the Sheikh, is informing the questioner that his creed is a result of thorough examination, research, and relying upon the evidences. For this reason, he is firm upon it, and he does not depart from it, regardless of the diversions. He will not replace it with something else, no matter what the temptations. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says about Ahl al-Sunnah wal hadith it is not known that any of their scholars, nor righteous common folk, ever renounced their doctrine and creed. Rather, they were the most patient of the people upon that, even if they were tested with all types of tests, and trialed with all types of tribulations. 
Now, my dear brothers and sisters, compare this to the wavering, to the doubts the people of Ahlul Kalam are upon, the people of theological rhetoric. Nutamiya rahimahullah also says, Ahlul Kalam, meaning those who base their religion upon theological rhetoric, are the people who waver most from one doctrine to another. They are found to be certain about a matter in one place and then certain about its exact opposite in another place. And they declare the one who asserts this to be a disbeliever. This is a proof of their lack of certainty. We ask Allah to make us from those who are firm and have certainty in their aqidah and to keep us away from any wavering or any doubts. And with that we conclude today's lesson. Insha'Allah in our next lesson we will take the next few lines of this great poem discussing the belief of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah in the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ya sa'ili an madhhabi wa aqidati ruzik al huda man lil hidayati yas'alu isma' kalama muhaqqiqin fi qawlihi لا ينثني عنه ولا يتبدل